due to YouTube's new policy and the Child Online Privacy Protection Act, no one under the age of 18 is permitted on this channel. We use sharp tools and chemicals when we restore and we customize vehicles. So again, please, no one under the age of 18 is permitted on this channel. Thank you so much for your understanding. Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we're going to restore a Hot Wheels Custom Corvette. Now as you can see here, the paint job is looking pretty rough. There's a lot of flea bites in it, there's a lot of toning on this car, and it's well played with, let's just call it what it is. But uh, tires are going to need replacing, and uh, I'm thinking that that windshield probably will have to be replaced too, but let's go ahead and get into the teardown and evaluate the car and see what we got. I've went ahead and I've drilled apart the car. Now we're going to take it apart and evaluate what we got here. Looking at the body, like I said, it's going to need a new paint job. So we're definitely going to have to do some uh, sanding, buffing, using steel wool, maybe a scotch Bright pad. And um, yeah, this definitely needs a good overhaul. Front end's a little bit rough there. Shining this the engine, we could polish that up a little bit to make it look pretty good. Here's the base. Tires definitely need replacing. Now I've been looking at the wheel bearings on this. Of course the, the base needs to be polished too. The wheel bearings on this look pretty loose. Now normally I would try and pop the tires off this thing, but uh, I'm afraid that if I do that that it's going to pop the bearing right off the wheel. So uh, we're going to go ahead and probably just snip these tires off front end will need to be detailed. Interior looks pretty good and uh, just to point this out notice how the steering wheel is separate from the uh, actual uh, molding of the inside. Now the windshield here is looking pretty rough and it's hard to see but there's a lot of microscopic cracks in it so I don't know I'm gonna have to try and clean this and polish it up but I don't think it's gonna do very well. Now we're going to put it in the citrus strip and strip the paint off. I'm not really feeling too good about this olive color on this car. I mean, it's good on some cars, but I don't know. I, there's something about an olive Corvette that just doesn't reach out and uh, make me feel good about it. So I think we're going to change the color on this particular car. While you're doing that, make sure you get the inside of the car too, because if you're going to change the color, you don't want the inside of the car olive and the outside of the car whatever other color you're going to paint it. So make sure you get the inside also. Now we're going to try and work on the windshield. I'm going to use this uh, Meguiar's plastic polish that I picked up at I believe AutoZone. But you can get it at any uh, auto repair place where you can get parts or anything. Now as I'm rubbing this out to make it uh, nice and clear and everything, like I said before I noticed some microscopic cracks in it. It started polishing up pretty good, but towards the end of polishing it, the windshield actually broke in half. So I had to order a new windshield. Now, I'm going to use the old one when I go to do the uh, reveal on this, but uh, rest assured that when I finish this for my collection, it's going to have a brand new windshield. Now, I did get that windshield from the Redline shop. They have all kinds of replacement parts on there. They have new hoods for cars. They have new glass. They have decals. They have the wheels. They have the paint. Go to redlineshop.com and John will take care of you. He has a fantastic product and this is where I get majority of my replacement parts if you're restoring red lines. And of course, they make that fantastic Spectre Flame paint. Well, I think we've done about enough as we can do with this windshield here. We've got the body out of the paint stripper, which I forgot to film when we were um, taking the paint off, but you've seen it in other videos, so basically you clean it off. 
First off, we're gonna use a Scotch-Brite pads. Now, I really like the Scotch-Brite pads because when you get a car that's got a lot of toning and a rough surface, your Scotch-Brite pads will make quick work out of smoothing out the side of the car. Notice how much toning there is on the car here, though. So it's gonna take quite a bit of work to get this nice and smooth. Let's uh, do the best we can with this, and then we'll move on here because this is kind of boring. But you've seen it in other videos. Now that we got it out of the paint stripper, we've cleaned it up, we're going to go ahead and polish it out. I'm using this Blue Magic metal polish here that works pretty darn good. I use several different products. I use this, I use Flitz, I use Turtle Wax Polishing Compound. But anytime I try something new, I'll try and give you folks my opinion on what, what I think about it, whether it works, whether I think it's trash or not. But this stuff works pretty good. Just take your time polishing. You don't have to put it on full speed. While we're thinking about it, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that little bell to alert you to any future videos that are coming out. We're going to continue polishing here with the uh, Blue Magic Polish. And get a really nice shine on the body of the car. This back area on the trunk was a little bit rough, but I didn't want to get in there with some sandpaper and stuff. I really hate using sandpaper on these cars if I don't have to. Some people use it, some people swear by it. I'm not crazy about it, but I will do it occasionally when, the, when it becomes necessary to use it. You may also have to use more than one coat of the polish in order to get the shine that you want. When you're done polishing this up and you're getting ready for paint, please use some type of degreaser and wax remover. This is a very vital step in the process of painting a car. If you don't use some type of a degreaser to clean it all up and scrub it down with a soft bristle toothbrush or something like that, it's going to reject the paint. I have done paint jobs on cars where I've had to do them several times because I didn't clean it properly. The better you prep your car for the paint, the better it's going to turn out. This is looking really nice. We still got a lot of the car to polish, but that's kind of boring, so we'll just move on. Now we're going to put our first layer of paint on. Remember before I was saying that I wasn't really crazy about the olive color, but in this particular car here, we're going to go ahead and change the color of the car to red. Now, one of the first things you need to do here is when you're applying this uh, initial coat, it needs to be a tack coat or a dust coat. What you're doing there is you're putting just a light layer on there to give the additional paint you're going to put on a tooth to bite on. And that's just giving it something to adhere to. But you need to let it set up for a few moments before you continue on with more paint. We've let that set up for a few minutes. Now we're gonna continue on. You still wanna put a few more light coats of paint on the car because you wanna slowly build up the layers. You wanna get that wet look, but you don't wanna saturate the paint. Not yet anyways. So keep rotating the car, keep moving it as you're painting it, and build up those layers slowly. Notice how I continuously move the car as I'm painting. It starts off with a real light pink color and then as you move on it starts to turn to a rose color and the more layers you put on with the Spectre Flame paint, the darker it's going to get. So once you get to the desired color you want and the shininess level that you want, the, uh, the gloss I mean, then you need to stop because again if you put more and more coats of this particular paint on, it's going to get darker and darker and darker. Now I've said that in more than one of my videos and I keep repeating it. Well, this may be just for the people who haven't seen my other videos yet. So I'm hoping that you go through and watch them all. That's starting to look really, really good. All right, looking real shiny too. Oh, let's move on. Meanwhile, back in the graveyard. Remember I was talking about the old tires I wanted to take them off to save them, but these bearings and the axles and everything are real sloppy. 
so I didn't want to take the chance of pulling the bearing off the axle because unless you've got a donor car or some other uh, way to uh, replace the axles you don't want to pull those those bearings off because they're really hard to uh, come by so I got plenty of tires so we're gonna snip these off and then we're gonna replace them I got this little snip here at Harbor Freight but you can get them at any store like Lowe's or Home Depot or any place that sells the tools I think they were like two dollars or something like that at Harbor Freight now in the comments section you'll note that there's a lot of product in there and where I got it from like if I bought it from Amazon or whatever and there'll be a link in the description so here we're putting on the new tires they're going on pretty good using this little handy dandy tool that I got from the Redline shop press it on with your thumb but support that bearing as you're pressing it on because you don't want to bend that axle now we'll put the front tire on and then we'll just repeat the process for the other side so you don't need to see me filming that now we've got the wheels on here we're going to look at over our, all of our parts again body's looking pretty good there the base is looking good I got the new wheels on and I went ahead and I polished up the base using that uh, same Dremel tool using this Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream. I use this on the rims of my truck and it works pretty darn good so I thought I would try it and it works. Now again the windshield here it cracked so I got a new one on order. And this is what we started with. This Hot Wheels Custom Corvette. It's a beautiful car but it's definitely tired right now. Again the, the paint looks uh, pretty rough the wheels definitely need to be replaced the windshield is toast it's just overall well played with but we need to bring it back from the dead and this is what we got to a beautifully restored Hot Wheels custom Corvette I really think that that red paint job really makes it stand out now again please notice how the windshield and the windows look pretty crappy I do have one on order but I wanted to finish this video up and get it out for you folks the paint job turned out fantastic I'm very happy with it now the wheels again are super nice I use the deep dish wheels on this one and those are available from the Redline shop um, love their products there good stuff please go to their site at redlineshop.com and you can get any of these nice parts now they also have some really great parts at Bright Vision Go to brightvisionwheels.com and they have the beautiful replacement parts too with their nitro flame paints and decals and window and body parts and like that. Nice place there. Go visit uh, Tony and he'll take care of you also. Thanks for joining me here today at Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul and have a happy Thanksgiving. We've got some Christmas build-offs coming up here. We've got a bunch of other videos in the works. If there is something you would like to see, or if there's something that I can make for you, just contact me at diecastgraveyard at gmail.com. Again, happy holidays to all you nice folks.